All right, folks, one last time, back to Chernobyl. You can see me dressed up in full protective gear here. Respirator, protective clothing, gloves, everything. And that is for a reason. You know I'm not usually picky about radiation or contamination, but this one is serious. So, make sure everything is prepared. Use the camera as a mirror. Make sure everybody else dresses up and check the radiation levels. Entirely normal here, but it's gonna change. Don't worry. Powerful torch on my forehead. A little bit of night vision on the camera, infrared. 0.2 microsievert power, as you could see. Normal radiation levels. As we're heading downstairs into the dark. Quite a puddle of water here, which is something to consider if you're wearing plastic above your shoes, which may just make you slip with all the equipment in your hand. That would be bad, so making a careful step into the unseen. Watch your every step. Watch out. You never know what you might encounter. Probably nothing, but who knows who or what is down here at any point. Careful looking and then proceeding. That's the way to go here. You can see, well, just random stuff here. Just tables and paint peeling off of every wall and some kind of bags filled with fuck knows what. Pipes and everything. Shelves. Shelves full of bags of, hmm, what may that be? More about that later, I guess. Now we're just looking, looking around, trying to find something. Reading radiation levels. There's a locked fence here. And it says, the usual, radioactive. Hmm, that fence is kind of useless because you can see there's this wood thing uh, just next to the fence, which can easily be broken off, as it is the case here. So you can go beyond the fence that is locked by a totally rusty lock. I think you can already hear those clicks. I think you already know what it means too. There's an old gas bottle or something on the floor. It looks kind of scary. A millum and a bottle in the shelf here. Okay. Every radiation detector is going off at this point, it seems. Everything is beeping. I'm making my way behind that big shelf or whatever. Okay, I must get an alarm mode. Gotta turn off the alarm because otherwise it's gonna beep and scream around all the time. The auto mess is kinda okay, it's just a silent beep. And that box is interesting. You can see hundreds of microsieverts on top of that black sand. Whatever that weird black sand might be. You can see 650 microsievert power readings there. And if you watch closely when it's dark like this, you can sometimes see flashes of radiation striking above the camera CCD. Just there. Do you see it? Just two on the left. If you go back by maybe five or six, seven, eight seconds now, you can see those two flashes on the left. Just hit the camera. There's a lot less flashes on this camera, of course, because it's a huge compact camcorder with a very large lens in front, so it's quite well shielded. But still, radiation levels here are sufficient to, uh, to actually show those flashes. Seriously heavy sand, so I'm wondering if it's some kind of sand that is used as a shielding substance. Because it's incredibly heavy. It's it's heavier than the than the typical monazite, than the dry monazite that I found. So I'm wondering what's in it. Monazite is like iron and thorium minerals. So what's in this to make it even heavier than that? <laughs> 
No, I was actually asking for for tools for digging up that shit and everybody was laughing and going like, what the fuck is she gonna do here? Oh god, make it stop. But I'm not stopping, I'm finding myself a shovel. Who put that there? That's very handy. I just said, please measure the side of the box to get any higher readings, but he didn't. So... And that was just another piece of something, maybe of sand, that I was checking out if it's hotter than the other stuff. After digging just a little, measuring again. Two thousand counts per second. Carefully digging deeper into the box in hope for some hidden radioactive material that was just shielded by this. Looking into the air, we see radiation flashes and radioactive dust all over the place. I guess I steered something up there. Hmm. How do I know it's radioactive dust? You'll see soon, don't worry. Now I gave away my camera to have both hands free and said, please remind me to change my gloves before ever touching the camera again, before you give it back to me. I have to stow my automass so it doesn't get in the way. And continue digging. Now look very closely at the numbers on the outer mass. You can see 0.9 kilocounts per second. That's 900 counts per second. And now, with my hand in front, it's just 170 counts per second. Hand is gone. It's like, again, 1000 counts per second. Uh, that gives me the idea that I might just be shielding uh, whatever kind of shit is flying around in the air. Once I put my hand there, or the shovel, you can see, drop to 200. If I put the shovel away, it's 1.5 kilo counts again. And the air is full of dust. That is bad. That is a bad sign. So that guy is turning around now to see. Okay, on the other side, it's just 170 counts. If I turn around to here again, it's like kilo counts. And... Uh, my hand, for example, wouldn't provide that much shielding to make it go that low if it was actually gamma radiation coming from that box. So it must be whatever is in the air. Well, now I'm trying to dig up some, some stuff uh, from the floor, from some kind of plastic bags, because I was apparently unsuccessful in digging out something from the box. It was quite empty, except for the sand. Maybe... The box below it would contain some nice radioactive material, but uh, it's unreachable because the rust has sealed them together. Now that looks like an uh, aluminum beta shield to me, and it contains some weird stuff, yeah. mm. uh. and it's radioactive apparently. So that's very curiously interesting. There's a random beta shield, beta pig, aluminum pig, whatever, on the floor, containing something that looks strange and is radioactive. Let's see what else I can find. You can see the counts went down again, because the air has settled as I stopped digging around. Well, so much for that. Some kind of filter or whatever that is. Yeah, it does produce a reading. Not too much, but it does. I'm digging deeper. I found a little, I don't know, lid from something, or whatever that is. But less radiation. Here, here. 
I did. <laughs> One more bag. Well, it just shows a little reading. But then a shoe. Okay. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at this. More than ten thousand. Oh god, okay. Yeah. Okay. Definitely something. You're videoing that? Nimmst du auch? Okay, we found one source. And holy shit, that Easy. sole of that shoe is reading like one millisievert per hour. What the hell? Indeed, that must have been a shoe that was worn by, for example, a firefighter or something. Probably a firefighter on the roof, carrying debris back into the reactor. Still trying to find more shit in that corner. Nothing. And yeah, that person is freaking out about that crazy shoe right now. Unreasonable. You can see radiation flashes occasionally when it's dark enough. You pay close attention. Very nice. Opening yet another bag. Like it's like a hammer. Yeah, that's the second stack of weird sandboxes. And uh, the reading seems to be higher there, even higher. Yeah. So, what's that? I guess we must dig again. Let's see. First of all, I'm finding some piece of cloth. Mm-hmm. Quite it. More than 10,000 per second. Same as usual. It's very easy to take a sample of. Very contaminated cloth. Mm -hmm. Hmm, what else is there? You can see the dust in the stream of light from my torch. Inside concrete. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, it's uh, one point two millisieverts, one point six millisieverts, one point eight millisieverts. Well, I don't have a hammer drill with me, so I don't see a way of getting there, so I guess we should move on. Let's see. Let's investigate those shelves full of little samples. according to this book. Well, I would assume these are soil samples from around the Chernobyl reactor that were taken to measure the persistent radiation levels. And the shelves are full of them now, li literally hundreds. Mm -hmm. yeah. That guy just said, why doesn't anybody turn on the fucking light, goddammit? But we'll have to do without any light and still make our way through it. Preferably without getting lost. So much to see here. Too bad I couldn't just stay there for like a day and a night or something. Mm -hmm. well, let's do what we can in the short amount of time that we have. That we have to be here 
semi-safely. Okay. It's interesting. Lots and lots and lots of chemicals. Oh, Again, okay, chemicals. Okay. What are they used for? Okay. We have to find that out. Let's see if we can find more samples. Oh, Looks like a computer program or something. Like an old spectroscopy program or something. I don't know. Or you would choose a number and run a specific program that is underlying to that number. Lots and lots of stuff. Laboratory equipment. Not really a sample, but it's used for sample preparation. Let's just make our way deeper into the laboratory and see. More chemicals and beakers and everything all over the place. Some weird stuff in the bag that gives us a reading of a few microsievert power. What's the secret of this laboratory? What on earth did they do here? More chemicals, more, 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 everywhere. Weird stuff. PC3, what the hell is PC3? Filters. Very interesting filters. What could they be used for? It's probably pH measurement. Hmm. What does it look like? Well, I do have an idea. Maybe you do by now as well, but... Well, let's keep the tension up. Just by the sink. Some acids left there. Yep, those are very specific things as well that you need to prepare the other things. We'll talk about later. Let's see if we can find the thing. There it is. Yeah, that looks like a fish. Can you measure it? Or did you measure anything else? Let's search this one, dude. That looks like a shield disc. It's just rather heavy, so maybe those are shields. Or maybe. Oh. Nothing to Those discs may still look like nothing to you, but they are an epic find. Alright, well, we have to get going. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of this crazy laboratory full of churnable samples and churnable waste and firefighter clothing and whatever is in that sandbox, we still don't know. I don't have a, have a hammer drill to open that box, but maybe we can find out what these magic discs are. Oh. Yeah, it looks like graphite or something. Yeah. 0.7 microsievert power on a huge block of graphite that you could, for example, use as a neutron reflector for criticality experiments. Very strange. You really don't need a block of graphite to measure contaminated samples from Chernobyl. Not at all. Weird. And all those chemicals we keep running into. What's all this? Cal potassium? Potassium, what's this? 
Can somebody quickly read what's on this? Can somebody read what's on this? Lest mal, was da, was da drauf steht, was da, was das für eine Chemikalien sind. Aha. Well, we want to leave and we should leave, we should get going. But this is too curious, too interesting. Too curious. Okay, take a few last pictures. Walk by that graphite block and some dodgy looking wires hanging off the ceiling. Good thing there's no electricity here. Alright, well, let's go. Time to head on out beyond the puddle of water here. And then go back up the stairs. Back to the light. Goodbye basement. Come on, go. I say to myself, but something... Someone tells me I should not leave yet. Someone tells me I did not discover everything that has to be discovered here. So I'm looking back, knowing I will be back. Okay. So let's try the samples. Just a few clicks, but do believe me, it is interesting. I promise. This is the mask I was wearing, and you can see 84, well, now 50 counts per second. So the filters are highly contaminated. Hmm. Curious. Sadly, I had to disable the sound because there was music running in the background, and I don't want YouTube to disable my video just because of a bit of background music, so you couldn't hear the clicks, but... Anyway, what you can see on screen right now is uh, how the filter got contaminated, of course, by the sand in that box, I figure, or maybe more than that, but definitely the sand played the largest role. And on the bottom, now to the right as well, you can see the outer radiograph I did. So I pretty much just placed the inner material, the true absorbent material of the filter, on an X-ray film for 48 hours, and then developed the X-ray film, with the uh, bottom right being a control sample that just reads like 2 microsievert per hour. And you can see a strong exposure that goes uh, through all layers. Some bits are very weakened, so that means that uh, on the first layer, there's something on the first layer, but not on the second layer, so that was maybe more alpha radiation. But you can see that these particles emit at least beta and or gamma radiation as well. But uh, that filter does emit alpha particles just as well. I checked that with, a, with an alpha-only scintillation counter, so um, yeah, well... Last night a gas mask saved my life. Definitely. And we shall see, of course, what isotopes we can find in that filter. And we're gonna reveal the secret of the weird disc. With that radiating center. Stay tuned. <laughs>